outside of browsing on my computer, acting like I'm getting any work done, the only free time I have is when I take a shower in the morning. Except I'm bombarded by all the things I you know, could have said on that racist Facebook post or how I could have looked less silly when asking that guy out that I really liked. I mean, he ended up marrying me, but that's beside the point. Uh, <laughs> for all the talking that we do on campus, it seems like we get tongue-tied when we need it the absolute most. Sun in my eyes and my gun on my hip. There's no way on my mind, got my mind on the fix. But a lot of niggas dying, so my nine. This school is a circus. And me, I'm a juggler. Test in one hand, sleep in the other. And the rest of my life all up in the air. There's, pr pr there's projects and papers and parties and internships and break trips and everything keeps smelling like bullshit, but I can't seem to quit. Cause my resume is big. The bay is always hungry. More lines More times. as everything else fades away. One of the only people I haven't given away tells me. I'm having a hard time. I say, can't this wait? I've got a test tomorrow and a paper the next day. Can't you go away into your convenience? My Google Calendar has an opening on Wednesday from 4 to 4.30. I can pencil you in. Hey, yes, you. The extra person standing on my shoulders, would you please get off me today? Depression should be factored into my GPA as a 24 credit class you passed just by staying alive in society. Gives me extra credit for keeping it a secret. For keeping scars out of sight. For waiting until I'm alone at night to fall apart. I wonder will my friends still look at me the same way if I stopped calling my therapy appointments. Meetings? If I told them I was sick. And my symptoms are much worse than a runny nose. Maybe I'll tell them that my brain chemicals are as unbalanced as a college student's diet. Then again. It's always easier just, just to say quiet. quiet. When I said, girl, can you tie my shoes? You're just so much closer to them. Or, listen, your personality makes up for everything else. I meant Past the patriarchy. that your eyes have only reminded me of stardust, that your laughter is the soundtrack to my daydreams. I meant to tell you there are songs I hear only when you're around that sound like power ballads and wedding bells and R&B beats all at once. I meant to say I like you, but I didn't. Instead, I let the fireflies in my stomach burn me from the inside out. Like whatever acid was left over onto my tongue, into the air, into my words. Call it negative. Call it begging for attention. Call it masculinity so fragile I can't even be real to the mirror. These days, I just call it missed opportunity. In fourth grade, I often sent the kickball flying over the school fence. Every time I stepped up to the plate, the boys would back up and wait to shower me with compliments like, You don't play like a girl. Back then, I took those words with pride. I could play. A mom, I'm sorry it only took me a week to quit ballet. I guess I'm just too, too much, much of a tomboy. But now I know that there's something wrong with being likened to a boy just because I picked up a different toy. No one explicitly says, Like a girl. Means you run slow. But when boys joke that the W and WNBA stands for weak. And everyone laughs. Women's self-confidence spirals like the football we can't throw. And I know it's often unintentional. But I learned early that masculinity is as fragile as the dolls I was supposed to play with. And I'm so tired of trying to fit this mold. It's already, already my, my first, first night in college when my neighbor says something along the lines of, This is a shit but hoes and tricks. And I stay silent. Then look my mother in the face the next day. Now at the time, I rapped, told myself people don't like being called out. Don't want to make the misogynists uncomfortable. Don't rock the boat. Later that semester, same neighbor calls me a chink. And me a nigger. And I stay silent. Then look myself in the mirror. And realize my high school had me whitewashed. My skin was unknowingly shed and soaked in bleach. And even though my parents made sure I knew my black history, made sure I knew I had to work twice as hard, I still stayed quiet in the locker room. Cause saying nigga wasn't wrong if I was just saying law to a song. After all, my peers always told me. You're the whitest black person I know. <laughs> Every time you tell your black friend they act white, you strip them of their heritage. Their opinion, generated from stereotypes that should have been lost long ago, banned. Dissolved like the way we outlawed how the masters whip to crack our hunts backs way 
down by heavy cotton sacks with the cartons still stacked against us. The, the silence starts early. With the first, the first, Hush. the first. We don't talk about that. It's insipid. Silence. Slithers into our cribs, slips into our mouths while we sleep, eats our tongues and replaces them. We don't even notice the difference most of the time. Because it's fine. Most of the time. But there are times. When our tongues are the most important organ we have. When we are only as strong as our voice. When everything depends on whether or not we can speak. That's when the silence strikes. That's when it binds our teeth tight together. And divides us. Using, using everything, everything except what's supposed to matter. And we let it. Because it's easy. We let it. Because that's how it's always been. We let it. Because we live lived God God's part for so long, we forget what it feels like, like to scream. Now I'm trying to get loud saying this poem. Because I've never raised my voice for myself before. It's about time we remember. What our tongues felt like before we swallowed them. What our voices sound like with the sound of. What it feels like. To finally breathe. Okay, everyone, incognito mode is now shutting down. You've reached the end of this program. We, we appreciate all you all staying with us. But first, can we give a, a humongous shout out to our events manager, Amber. All of this together. All of this together. <laughs> and, I, and our also pivot president, James. <laughs> and give it up for all of these amazing poets and performers tonight. Give it up for these poets and performers tonight. Okay, awesome, awesome. So stop procrastinating and go home and do the homework you're already skipping out on. <laughs> Until you need us for more dope distractions, peace, love, and poetry, have a great night.